Just a few hours ago, AMD CEO Lisa Su walked on stage for her Computex 2024 keynote to announce yet another generation of Zen, this time Zen 5, that, well, if you ask me, honestly delivered pretty much exactly what we should have been expecting in terms of performance uplifts over Zen 4. Namely, it will bring an around 16% higher IPC, which was basically what I've been saying over and over again for over a year. And I do mean that, over a year. If you dig all the way back to March of 2023, you can see that I was saying that the people who are extra confident what the IPC uplift will be were saying over 15%. And I even at one point linked a Cinebench score to prove it at one point. So yeah, that shouldn't have surprised anybody and of course this translates into well above 20 percent performance uplifts in some games but below 10 percent in some apps like you would expect to get with an average that's in the middle of there and of course as we've gotten used to over the past few years amd announced 16 12 8 and 6 core flavors of the new zen architecture and it will be launching at the end of july so yeah at the end of next month which is right in that range that's been leaked for release dates for zen 5 client desktop for a while now so there really wasn't anything there that surprised me at all in fact i thought well i really should ask the community if anyone was surprised to make sure i wasn't missing something here and maybe i knew what to expect but other people were expecting more or less and, and the poll i put out on the moore's laws at youtube channel and on the moore's laws at twitter to try to pull in some outside uh, views I actually found 87% of people uh, picked the middle three options. So if 87% of the people polled said that Zen 5 was either exactly what they expected or slightly weaker or slightly stronger. People, this is what we were all expecting. Although I guess, yeah, most of the people who took that poll probably have been following this channel's leaks for a while and so voted for what they've been seeing for a while now. But at the same time, when I looked around in the comment sections on like video cards and a few other websites... I don't know, over half of the people, as far as I could tell, said that this was what they expected. And I even came across some polls on Twitter where over half of people said this is what they expected. So actually, the one thing that I would point out, though, is there were a ton of comments all over the place, including in the comment section of the poll that I put on the YouTube channel that had a lot of people saying that they thought the price was going to make or break Zen 5. And I entirely agree. And that is because most people expect Arrow Lake to be very competitive, at least in terms of performance with Zen 5, and I do as well. I expect that Arrow Lake should be likely similar or a bit better in multi-threading than Zen 5. And in gaming, I don't know, I think it will win. I, I don't want to put a firm number on it, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Arrow Lake is 10 to 15% faster than Zen 5 base in gaming. Remember, I said base, you know, standard. Once you add Vcash, I think that gaming performance is going to likely be about the same between Zen 5 X3D and Arrow Lake later this year. So it's, it's definitely all going to come down to price. Although I have to say, I really do think that AMD does have a chance to decimate Intel and do it yourself this year if, if they launch the existingly announced lineup for something that is somewhat more aggressive than I think most people are expecting. Namely, if they went for like $599 for the 16 core, $449 for the 12 core, $349 for the uh, already announced 8 core, the 9700X, and $249 for the 6 core, and then push decent volume into the channel in July, and then sell that sucker for months before Intel has anything to respond with. And if they do that, if, a if it's a big if, but if AMD does do that, price Zen 5 aggressively, I don't really think Intel has any good options to respond here as Arrow Lake is going to cost decently more to produce since Arrow Lake uses 3 nanometer in more expensive packaging. AMD uses 4 nanometer in packaging that is a lot less complex than the tiles that Intel's working with right now and something that they've gotten used to doing forever is it's basically the same, you know, chiplet layout that they've been doing since five years ago with Zen 2. I just, if AMD does that, leverages their pricing advantage to charge way less than Arrow Lake does. I just think Intel's going to launch a more expensive processor months after AMD's in the market, and then Intel's also going to have to explain to you why you're going to get something that's about the same performance that you also need to buy a new expensive motherboard for, whereas AMD will just let you drop Zen 5 into all of the motherboards out there right now that are going to be way cheaper, I believe, than what Intel will have at the time. And, well, I wouldn't bet on AMD having X3D or, who knows, Zen 5C AM5 offerings this year. 
you know, it really might be quarter one or something. I wouldn't rule out the chance that AMD is waiting to announce those after they get more info on Arrow Lake. I really do think it is worth reminding people that five years ago, it's, yes, it's already been that long, five years ago when AMD was preparing to launch Zen 2, they announced the 3900X and then didn't say anything about a 16 core. And a lot of websites said that this was their flagship. AMD waited for Intel to show more of their cards. And then they went, boom, actually, we have a, we do have a 16 core. And it is going to come out months later when we're ready to launch it. But it is still coming out this year. I would not discount at this stage that AMD could do a November or December client X3D launch for Zen 5 or maybe even Zen 5C so they could have something that is really the best of the best of what Zen 5 can offer right next to Arrow Lake's launch. But if we're being entirely honest about that, you know, AMD has eight weeks really until this launch. They could probably actually, in my opinion, they could announce the pricing for the 9950X, the 9900X, the 9700X, the 9600X, you know, the things they've already announced. They can announce that pricing maybe in four weeks from now. Still wait to see if Intel reveals what Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake should perform like. And then, honestly, like one week before the 9950X launches, I think AMD could just totally and in not a bad way announce actually there is an X3D or some other special edition models coming out November or December this year. And this is what those will cost if you want to wait for them. But if you want to save money and buy now, this is what this will cost. Don't discount that AMD could do that. But again, like I said in a video a few days ago, I do think it would behoove AMD to, at a minimum, announce the quarter, at least, that X3D models will be launching before they officially launch the 9950X on July 31st, so that everyone can make an informed decision when they go out or don't go out to buy something next month. And I would also... I got to say it, AMD, if you're greedy with how you price Zen 5, Zen 5's biggest advantage over Air Lake is the fact that it should offer similar performance while using a cheaper node in cheaper packaging. AMD, your greatest weapon this year is pricing. If you don't leverage that pricing to undercut Intel, then you don't have an advantage this year. Oh. Uh, Unlike with Strix, where AMD is going to have a massive advantage against Intel this year. And I want to talk about that and some stuff I noticed in AMD's Computex keynote that should be terrifying Intel investors. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you with the Basis 10,000 mAh power bank. With this 20 watt power bank that is equipped with powerful magnets, you can securely lock it to the back of any iPhone 12 through 15 with a magnetic pulling force of 2.2 pounds that ensures that you can just leave it in your pocket or bag while it's charging. And it's very small and portable, yet with a 10,000 mAh capacity, it contains enough power to charge an iPhone 15 Pro Max 1.3 times, an iPhone 12 2.1 times. And you're charging quickly. An iPhone 15 Pro can charge to 50% in just 30 minutes. Plus, the battery pack itself can be fully charged in under two hours with an 18 watt. PD charger and it can still be charging your phone at the same time making it an excellent travel wireless charger to place by your bed while you're sleeping in a hotel like my girlfriend likes to do so it's really the perfect portable iPhone charger although it can of course charge any other USB-C device my girlfriend loves it and thus I really do recommend it it's pretty cool so if you're interested and you want to support Moore's Law is Dead utilize any offer codes listed below and follow the links on screen to get the best prices you can on this great product heck even just clicking on the links below helps the channel a ton but buying it with the links and directions below helps even more so support moore's law is dead by checking out the basis 10,000 mah magsafe power bank today all right so strix amd's next gen ai apu that was also just announced at computex and according to amd if you compare it to this qualcomm snapdragon x elite it is a bit better in terms of performance. Although I guess to be fair to Qualcomm, they also just put out some odd benchmarks that claim similar performance to Strix if you add it all up. But I'm going to be honest, I am unconvinced by any speedometer 2.1 benchmarks but I, I don't know I, I think that it does already look like strix is probably at least a bit stronger than the x elite we'll have to see what happens with battery life and really just in general we'll have to wait for third party reviews to be sure if it's entirely worse than strix i, I could see the x elite having its own set of niches where it is a bit better in some scenarios 
But that is unlike with Intel Meteor Lake that just flat out won't be able to compete with Strix. Flat out, this is an absolute bloodbath. And remember, Lunar Lake only has four big cores. Strix has 12 big cores. Lunar Lake is not a premium APU. It's meant for thin and lights, and it will be launching a quarter after Strix. And then Arrow Lake Mobile isn't really launching or possibly launching at all until next year. And that will perplexingly have a weaker NPU than not just Strix, not just than the Snapdragon X Elite, not just than the Apple M4, but also even than AMD's Hawkpoint APUs. And, and really this slide here, this slide here from AMD says it all. Strix launches quarter three with 12 big cores in the strongest NPU this year. And then after that, and I think that's so important to point out, after that, Lunar Lake with just four big cores and a weaker NPU will be launching. Why on earth would an OEM care about Lunar Lake? Strix drops into Hawkpoint designs. It doesn't require designing all of these new fancy laptop chassis for something that's just worse than something that's already out and probably costs less to purchase. If it's more expensive, late, and has worse AI, well, OEMs are trying to push AI super hard. Why would anyone use Lunar Lake? And then Arrow Lake, again, which should have a competitive CPU performance, it's coming out even later. And so again, why would OEMs care? I don't know if they will. And I think AMD knows that this is going to be a big advantage that needs to be rammed home in their marketing. And that's genuinely why I do think the main reason AMD is deciding to go with AI 300 for the naming of their Strix products is to make it obvious that after Phoenix and then Hawkpoint, now Strix, this is their third generation of NPU launching against Intel, who will still be on their first generation of NPU with Meteor Lake. I do think that is good marketing, to be fair. I do think that AMD is smart to point out that Strix has a third generation AI engine, whereas Intel has something that is a fraction of the performance and still basically in beta. It's their first try. Uh, however, I do admit I hate the name. I hate that they just went to this new naming scheme that a lot of people didn't seem to like, you know, with Hawkpoint, but I thought made it obvious what you were buying. And then whether you liked it or not, now they're just changing the name again. So I guess I'm just going to give up on hoping that AMD will use a consistent mobility naming scheme for more than two years in a row. But again, despite me thinking the name 300 is dumb, whatever. I don't know. Maybe OEMs pushed AMD actually to use this silly naming scheme for them so that they can market AI third generation on the laptops. For all I know, OEMs pushed AMD to give Strix this stupid name. And I just think they're really excited about it either way. Look, honestly, if you watch the AMD keynote, and I really recommend you do to see what I'm talking about here, I think it is obvious how excited OEMs actually are to put Strix in their upcoming products. I mean, these OEMs were practically climbing over each other to be able to be next to Lisa Sue and show off a new laptop early and the way they were trying to differentiate themselves from each other wasn't by pointing out a specific piece of amd hardware that they are going to use to beat their intel competition or something they were talking about software like lenovo saying this piece of software we have will make you want a lenovo laptop over the competition they were all focusing on software because they know there's no point in talking about hardware anymore. It's gonna be about software this year if you wanna make the best laptop, not hardware. Because if you even wanna be in the running for it, you're gonna to have to buy AMD. And they know they're gonna to have to buy AMD because of how far behind Intel is to this boom. And I cannot help but worry that Intel here has just missed the boat. This is the perfect time right when Copilot Plus is coming out with real apps. Yes, the apps are still kind of gimmicks, but they're actual apps unlike a year ago where there really weren't any apps to be seen. Now really is the year where I think you can milk having the best AI APU in a laptop the hardest. And despite you trying to tell everybody, Pat, that AI is everywhere with Intel this year, as far as I can tell, it's AMD AI that is everywhere and Intel AI that can be found nowhere. And that is going to just about do it for this video. Well, except I do want to say one quick word here. I would say for the past about six months, there have been a perplexing amount of 
on and brazen and personal attacks on this channel for saying things like Zen 5 is launching in the second half of this year, even though it did end up doing that. And then saying that this channel was crazy for not saying that Zen 5 would get, I don't know, more than a 30% IPC increase, even though it ended up getting the IPC uplift that was exactly claimed by this channel, not just months ago, but over a year ago. And I just want to say that those attacks on me and the other team members of this channel, they're not just attacks on us. They're attacks on you, you person watching this, the community. They're attacks on your ability to get accurate information because their egos are just insane. And I would hope that the members of this community that enjoy content like this might, well, might just try to reach out and say to some of those people, take a chill pill. We do not need any more toxicity or ill-informed information in this community. I think it already has enough of that. And actually... On that note, I'll say if you want to be a part of a community of thousands of people who just had a blast healthily watching the announcements of Computex, well, live industry experts, uh, people who are physically at Computex, and me, we're all in this Discord and commenting on a live chat that wasn't full of ego-driven flamers that get everything wrong anyways. If you want to be part of that community, join the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon to get access to that Discord. The lowest tier gets you access to that and tons of exclusive content every month. There's a catalog of hundreds of bonus episodes of Die Shrink that you will get access to. And uh, also, you'll be supporting, of course, me and a team of people that drive to get you accurate reporting early. But you know what? For everybody else, if you made it this far, thank you for watching.